Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another live session with The Hype Magazine. I'm your editor-in-chief, Jerry Doby. And today, 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 I've got one of the legendary names in the music game. He is Chris Gotti. He is, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, Jerry, I'm, man, thank you for having me, man. Hype Magazine, let's do it. I appreciate you, man. Look, your history, your legacy, your pedigree is undeniable. The things you. That you guys have done, we're going to mention Murder, Inc. real quick and move on. But sure, sure. you guys have, have affected and contributed to the fabric of music worldwide. It's yes. undeniable. It's inescapable. And we have to acknowledge that. And uh, thank so thank you for what you did early on when you know, hip hop was kind of starting to get organized label wise <laughs> and you know what I mean? Um, breaking artists and giving people an opportunity to feed their families and create generational wealth, which you are continuing to do to this day through your new uh, imprint called Adventures Music, man. Love yes, it. yes, it's just, that's a digital distribution platform. You know, the game changed, so we have to evolve with it. Um, and right now, and there's a net a need to help all these independent artists that now seem like they came from every which way, from under every stone, every round, every corner, right? They all are now out here. And that's something that I take a very uh, serious uh, pride in trying to give them the game and passing on some of this information and knowledge that I have and showing them the way that they could go so they could own their business. Because I also know these record labels today, the business they're in is a little different than it used to be. Okay. Uh, then we talked about early on, I mentioned the metaphor of the name. So it's yeah. ADD Ventures yeah. Music, Ad Ventures. Everybody yeah. talks about having multiple streams of revenue. Talk mm -hmm. to me about uh, how you came about Ad Ventures. There's two parts. There's two parts to how I came up with Ad Ventures. First and foremost, I'm adding ventures businesses together in music it was very it's that simple i'm putting business ventures together so i'm not just a digital distribution platform we all do it all the other platforms uh universal one of sony all do dis digital distribution exactly the same we all do it exactly the same we may have more outlets than most but that's just the added value, right? Right. But at the end of the day, your music gets uploaded and gets to all those DSPs, those digital service providers like Apple, Spotify, Amazon. Just the way Universal would do it, we do it the same way. Just the way TuneCore, United Masters, DistroKid would do it, we do it exactly the same. The, now, the part that when I put the ad, the ad part, the ADD is because uh we have to we do services right so think of an independent artist they don't know except from they don't have relationships right. they don't have the relationships that might be needed that is needed to actually further their career if you think of what universal does for an artist and i'm always going to use universal because they're the biggest i i go after the biggest right i'm not playing for I'm Universal is the biggest uh, record label in the world so what independent artists should look at is whatever they do we should do okay so it, all you are as an independent artist is a miniature Universal so Universal has all these relationships all these businesses these these infrastructures that they use to break artists how is an independent artist going to get that if they go put their music out with distro kit that's just one part of the business, right? And then I use my 30 plus year career in my relationships and I basically open the door to all these artists so they could utilize those relationships. But it's again, you're independent, you pay for it. So don't think I'm paying for your business, right? This is your team, this is your magazine, digital magazine. This is Jerry's business. This has nothing to do with me. I'm here to add a value for you, that's it. And it's the same thing I do with music and adventure music. I add values. I do all the services that you might need down to mixing and mastering, graphic design. I mean, these are all departments that a universal would have inside of their company. Right. Right. If you wanted to do any of these services you in universal, 
they take care of it, but that's why they take so much from you. See, artists always complain about how much they the, the labels take, but I could give you the, the flip side of that coin too. Why yeah. why they take that? You know, if you want someone to put up all the risk and all of the all of the relationships and all you did is make the music. Again, I got millions of people that make music, really good music too. There's a difference between what, what makes one better than the other is the marketing of it, it's all these services that I'm talking about. Right. And of course, yes, there is a difference in quality of record, but at the highest level is very small. Right. So right. One, of the, one of the big deals, and I, I don't make music, I'm not an artist. Um, you know, I, I did go to college for music business to understand, okay. to understand, you know, uh, the questions that I needed to ask when I speak yeah. to people like you and artists that are, are, are doing the damn thing. But um, what I, from the outside looking in, yes, it, see is that a lot of people don't come, don't understand that, you know, the marketing department takes a budget. The recording takes a budget. Mixing and mastering takes a budget. And <laughs> if you come into a distribution situation, you have to bring that marketing budget with you. Yes. You, you have to bring all that bread that, let's say you got a deal with Universal and you're bitching about a 360, but they're giving you $5 million to create this record. Yeah. Um, and from that that budget that they're giving you, you've got still got to pay for, you know, it's an advance to pay for your studio time. It's advanced to pay for your producers and engineers and make the video. It's yeah. not bought and buy a Lambo. It's <laughs> working, it's working capital. They've loaned you working capital. Yes. It's Convers a loan. Conversely, with a, a, a an imprint like Adventures, you need to bring your working working capital with you. You have to have it, yes. And when you say it's a loan, I, I like to let you know it's a loan with incredibly, terribly bad rates <laughs> no doubt. that you have to pay back. <laughs> it's that payday loan with that 231% interest rate that you're getting ready to call <laughs> yeah. for, man. You know, I, I would make jokes and say, um, it's, it's imagine you're going to buy a house but you never you pay the mortgage, you pay the bill, but you never own the house. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what music business is. You never own that house. That's theirs. Mm -hmm. But you're oh. paying the note off for them. <laughs> I have to ask though, uh, you know, with the big companies, oftentimes the only person that you really deal with is an AR person or a project manager or somebody who really doesn't get to know you as a business person. Even when you have a label deal, you don't you don't have a, someone who gets to know you as a business person and as an individual. Yeah, you have the advantage through adventures of being able to put hands on mentorship. Yes, people and help them understand the business and develop a business. Talk to me a little bit about that process. You know, was was crazy. You bring that up, Jerry. Um, I probably am the only digital distribution company that isn't automated. Hmm from a response standpoint. You speak to real people. I have a staff, they respond, emails. Uh, if you see us, they tell you, they talk to you. Again, think of how hard that is when you're trying to scale, right? Um, and I'm absolutely trying to scale to the highest level. Let's say TuneCore is the biggest distribution, digital distribution company. They have over two plus million independent artists on their platform. Hmm. So that gives you a little sample size of how many artists there are. And there's other companies that have well over a million wow. uh, artists. That's how many independent artists there are out here. Um, I want them all. <laughs> <laughs> I so mad. how can I scale is the question. And the question that is the biggest challenge, um, scaling when you're dealing with um, live people, real people, real time, real real opinions and in, in information, right. um, not just an automated uh, generated response, you know, but technology, that's what technology is for so they can scale, I'm not knocking it. But I do know these independent artists have to understand they need more information than they have at their fingertips. Right. Um, 
And really, it's a lot of it's a work in progress. And if they don't put in the work, none of it means anything anyway. They have to understand that they're the owner of their business. They have to understand that no one's going to do it but them. They have to understand it has to get done. They need budgets uh, to get things done. Now, mind you, my job as the CEO of, of Adventure Music is really to uh, empower independent artists with the the lowest level of a service possible, meaning lowest level, meaning at the lowest financial level, cost level, but it still has an effect. A again, so you could get your business, just like any business, you didn't, you don't start at the top, you build your way up. So it, you can't be embarrassed if you're only dealing with $100, $200, something. Oatmeal is better than no meal. You have to get started and you have to get used to the fact that you're paying for your shit. Mm -hmm. So you might as well start when you can. If it's only a hundred bucks that you could afford to do, cool, put it in this, do that, do something with it. It's only for your own benefit. And then you'll start seeing a result. And then when you see what that gets you, maybe you say the next time I need 200, 500, 1000. It, you know, you can't, I don't know any business that you think you could just walk into and then get these things for free. And this yeah. is what most most independent artists have that vibe, like they they expect it to be given to them. But if they want it given to them today, the only again if they have to be at that level to get a record deal. Mm. So I just mentioned TuneCore with over two million artists. There's no fucking way in the world Universal, Warner Bros, Sony could sign two million artists. Wow. Financially, they'd be broke. Right. Right. Right even at a hundred thousand dollar deal for everybody, they couldn't afford it. Right. So that's the problem. And there's still millions of more that's out there. This is what the, the reality has to set into these artists that everyone will not get a deal. I don't care how good you are, or how talented you are. It's just what it is. The best artists didn't get record deals. Don't, I don't, I never think that the best artists have a record deal. OK, that's just what it is. I feel there's artists out here that I've seen that are super talented that just never got the exposure or the opportunity today in order to get a record deal. If you don't have your numbers up, you cannot get a deal in black music. Very important. Yeah. In yeah. black music, if you're a pop artist and you are super talented, they may still take a chance to develop your ass. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you're in black music, if you're a, someone with some uh <laughs> pigmentation right so <laughs> you're not, you better have your numbers up they're not just handing out these deals to anybody just because of talent anymore mm -hmm. and that's a sad day in music to me but that's where the labels are at because they um they're uh it's just risks right. you know they they they're, they're concerned about the risks and, and their risk is uh, once you have numbers they have a, a far less risk of losing money with you i just uh uh looked at a piece and i I, re I wrote a piece on this a long time ago but i just looked at a fresh piece mm -hmm. uh, about several atlantic music artists who have botted their way b-o-t-t-e-d yes their yeah. way <laughs> uh, robots to numbers and yeah. were just exposed basically, and had those numbers stripped. It is like the second time. You, you know, those are Black artists, I'm sure. And they are. Okay, so here's yeah. the flip side to that coin, right? Mm -hmm. I always talk about this. See, the technology's evolved and changed so they could find it and spot it way easier if it's bots or not. Mm -hmm. But uh, a very successful artist, white, um, and I, again, I think he's talented, don't get me wrong, uh, Justin Bieber. He uh -huh. built his business on bots in the beginning, but it turned to real. Right. See, it converted. And, you know, this is something I tell women all the time. I said, see, a female artist has it harder because I never seen a female artist where men chase them around. Like, think of all the little girls that was chasing Justin Bieber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which Scooter Braun staged in the beginning, but turned to real. It turned to reality. Right. That's the that's what bots need to do. But if you don't t convert, and that's what those Atlantic artists had a problem, they didn't turn to reality. Right. So right. 
but that that fake stuff they have a way of spotting it today is it's harder you can't sneak it over them it's easy these labels yeah. got you know they get you know when you're investing millions of dollars you're gonna learn fast yeah. you're not gonna just do it and not realize what the real issue is yeah it was only a few years ago that youtube stripped a bunch of major labels of their youtube views um, yes you know early on people were just learning how to to manipulate the system. They have they have cases of people getting locked up. For fraud. Forget, you know, for fraud. Because there's real money and it's real fraud. It is real fraud because these uh these sponsors, the brands that are paying for those ads that are in front of your views that gets you to be make the money. The reason why YouTube could pay you is because of ads. Mm -hmm. You have to understand how the business works, then you understand why it's illegal. <laughs> Speaking of business. What was the biggest surprise about the business part of the music business when you first came on into the world? Well, the the, the biggest uh, revelation, let's call it, uh, in the music business was that it's designed to steal and rob every artist. Mm. The record industry, the record labels, mm. that's their that's the design of the of the the contracts. That is exactly what their purpose was from the very inception, to take the talent, pay them very short, own everything, and that's their business. And they never really wavered off of that business model. So my whole thing when I go out with adventures and I do my um, like seminars and I talk to all these people and artists, I said, when was it the right time for the slaves to be let, let go? It's the same. I have that same vibe with the the music industry. When was it the right time for artists to be free? And to me, the answer is now. The, the right time is now because the this there's opportunities to do so now. I feel today um, artists work off the old way, which was the patron of the arts. So the patron of the arts was if you was a, a musician back in the day and. 1800s and you was in your village and you played a guitar or whatever it is that's what that's the 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 town supported you so you could continue to be that artist to bring that music if you was a painter they paid for you so you could keep painting because they appreciated it so when i look at streaming companies like uh spotify that's the, the village mm. And that's how you'll be able to pay for your business. You have to get the patron arts. They have to appreciate your art form. It's just so populated today. It's crazy. I was reading something where they say Spotify is uploading over 100,000 songs daily. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But that's how much music is out here. Right. So to me, it's a, you know, we used to be quality over quantity. And today it's both. If you don't have quantity with quality, you're in trouble. You know, I, I gently disagree with you on the fact of on the, the 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 point of quality, because there's some flat out garbage that. No, I didn't say compromise quality. I said you have to have both quality and quantity. No, I, what I was saying was that there's a lot of garbage that makes it um, on into the scene and makes. And becomes major hits. So, so let me let me that, let me. That's start. garbage. Okay, let me say that. That's opinion. It's uh, an opinion. Obviously, I agree. I agree. right? So here, so obviously, I can sit here and say, obviously, it's not garbage because millions of people is fucking with it, right? So it's just your opinion, and I don't get into opinions. I get into reality. Like, if if that's the fair. masses are saying they like it, you, it's not our job to say it's trash. It's say, okay, exploit it, make your money. Like, I, I have no problem with people making money. You know, we was talking about all of this, this drill music and this and this. I was at a, I was at um, a skating party for kids with uh, Larry, No Limit Larry from Charlotte. Okay. He's on the radio station. Shout out to Madhouse and all of them, Burpee and, and, and everyone and Jessica, Miss Jessica over there. Um, and it's just, he did, he did an event for his birthday with kids so they the parents can bring their kids to skate and everything and roller skate. But when I'm listening to the music, there is no music for kids today. Fair enough. Everything is fuck, 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 kill, 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 suck, 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 dick, 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 you know, bust downs. That's all it is. It's 
ass shaking or killing type music. And that's it. Right. And to me, that's sad because you, you, there's nothing to play for kids that's popular. See, there might be music that's created that is kid worthy and f fine, but the powers that be doesn't make it popular anymore. So right. then that's why it's not, it's, it's no longer when you play, the kids don't even know it because they don't, they only know that, that type of music. Right. Singing every word, every song. And it's like, damn, let these kids be kids. This is grown folk talk. Right. And they don't get it. It's like, and it's sad. And again, it's sad because that music form is gone now. I always make a reference to, let's say, a Whitney Houston, uh, an incredible talent, Luther Vandross. These are incredible artists in, that I grew up listening to. And, 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 you know, and today they may not even be a, a relevant artist only for the fact that they wasn't socially accepted. Like they didn't know how to get the, the follows and the likes. Right. <laughs> and it would be this. sad to say <laughs> that you, did, you, you would have lost a, a artist like that. I hear I deal with Ja Rule and Ashanti, right? Shout out Ja and Ashanti. 20 years later, no new music, and they still could fill up arenas and tour, make millions of dollars. Why? Because that music is timeless because there is no music like it anymore. So there's only one way to get it. And that's come back to Murder, Inc., that Murder, Inc. sound. And that's the truth. I'm watching it, and I'm watching the audience. I watched the audience when it was very light. We was, you know, they was going and doing shows and they're doing 5,000. They're back to arenas and 20,000 and 50,000 overseas. It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, and I'm watching the audience. It's getting younger again. Yeah. Which is completely amazing to me, but it's understandable when you break down the landscape of this music business and where everything's at. And that's, to me, the challenge. That's the challenge and the problem. But, you know, and people say, how? It's the powers that be. These record labels, they're, they're the bosses still. They still control what's going on. They control the narratives. Right. So, but the kids have, it's only finding this type because this is what's getting pumped and spent millions of dollars in marketing uh, on. You know, jazz is a dead format of music. It's like, what? R&B is damn near going to be dead as well. How right. many R&B artists do you hear that's really, just give me, don't count Chris Brown. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm just saying, because he's already established, give me the new up and coming R&B guys. There's no one that the labels even care about to push because they can't get the likes and follows of the audience. So it's just business at that point. They don't want to spend the money on it if it doesn't have the return. And we would all do the same thing in our business if that was the case. We would pivot and change. So that's why they have to die. That's why it, record labels have to not exist anymore because they can't control the narrative anymore. And then they still rob and steal because that's the design of record labels. Here I am, Murder Rink, and I'm telling you, that's the design of record labels. So when you ask me that question, that is the biggest thing I learned. I didn't know music. I learned it. And when I learned how what it's really about, I never dealt with an a I only dealt with CEOs in my whole career. So at the end of the day, I'm getting educated from their 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 point of views. Mm -hmm. And when I hear it, it's ugly, it's gruesome. It's like, man, I I started Adventures in 09. Let's let's put that in perspective. Wow. 09. I didn't have it na the name when I wrote it, when I wrote my business model was not Adventure Music. It was called who Cares Music Group. Wow. And the reason I call it Who Cares is because I care. I seen how these the the, the 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 devious ways these lawyers and executives deal with artists and how they take the money. You know, we was a 50-50 joint venture. So we're partners with with the label. So when I fought for Ja Rule and I fought for Ashanti and I fought for Lloyd for their deals. The words that these CEOs came back with gave me my education of why it's not meant to be. They would, and I'm talking about the top of the top. Our name is named Doug Morris. Mm -hmm. He was the boss of Universal Music Group, which means every label under him was had to report to him. And he would say, fuck Ja Rule, fuck Ashanti, go get another artist and they'll take the deal we're gonna give them. Damn. And, and if I'm fighting for getting them five men, he's like, no. I'm fighting to get him 10 million. He was saying no. 
that he and he would look at me and Irvin and say, "You're you're my partner. Why am I fighting with you? Like they they have nowhere to go. Don't give them the deal. They're gonna when they get broke, when they sit there broke, they'll come back and take whatever we give them. That was the mindset, and that is one thousand percent real today still. And I and, and again, they these these CEOs that when you hear Dame Dash talk culture vulture and everything, I get it. He's not lying. Uh, shout out Dame, that's my boy too, man. He's not lying. And again, he's he's now on the independent way. He was Rockefeller. Right, right, right. Right. The difference is Murder Inc. for sure, Rockefeller for sure fought for their artists, not worrying about our profit for the label. And that makes us very different. Right. You know what I'm saying? You never heard one of our artists on Murder Inc. complaining about their deals. Why is that? Everybody has problems with their, their artists, everyone. I say cash money's the best, but little baby and little Wayne, and you know, baby and Wayne, Slim, who's yeah. his father, suppose, you know, his daddy right. was stealing. Mm. It's it's not cool. It's and it's real. And it's like, yo, that you heard stories for that. I'm like, everybody had problems with their labels, except murdering. So again, it's a testament to who we are as as people, as men. Me and my brother. At the end of the day, that's how I look at it. But when you asked that question, that was a great question because that was the eye opening part of the music industry for for me. The first that was the main thing because for me, I came from the construction world, oh. uh-huh. <laughs> I was, so I had to learn music. I worked construction and music simultaneously for about a year and a half, almost two years before I, I stopped doing construction. I owned my own construction company. We was doing millions of dollars in construction, me and my sister. We was doing jobs for 10, 20 million, 50, 40 million dollars. That was our biggest job wow. in construction. So at the end of the day, I was making tons of money already in construction. I had a, a crew of about 37 men, almost 40 man crew. And it was all black owned. And we was out there working and getting shit done. And I still got things built in New York that I'm part of. But at the end of the day, I I come back to Irv and he's like, come over and run his production company. So I have to learn the business. I'm selling beats, but I don't, I got to know how we make money. Is. That's right. why the education for me is everything. I learned that on the fly. I didn't go to college for this shit. I learned on the fly. I was we was taken advantage of by lawyers and accountants multiple times. But when you lose your own money, you learn fast. Yes, sir. And that's we yeah, lost yeah. a lot of money. I spent millions of dollars in music that I've lost. That's that's my education. So it's way more expensive than let's say Harvard Business School, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, no <laughs> but doubt. But at the end of the day, this is the path that I had to go through. I didn't, you know, I didn't go to school. I didn't go to college. But these are the real, these are the real educations, you know, real life. Yeah. And then like I said talking to and then physically doing and being there. I mean, the wealth of knowledge, the amount of artists I dealt with and spoke to, producers. I mean, I don't think there's another executive at my level that has dealt with more artists than me or producers than me. And that's, I think, is one of the differentiators uh, about ad adventures and yeah. the others is that you've got the real world experience. You know, but that's the tagline for the university that I went to, a real world education, real world experience, right? But sure. you really did it you know, coming from an entirely different industry yeah, and immersed yourself in a brand new industry, business is still business, the basic concepts. Number one. Number one, business is still business, but you entered something that was more cutthroat than global (laughs) politics. I've been involved in Two of the worst businesses in my that I've been and I've been involved with a ton of businesses in my career. Mm. I'm 55. I'm not no young kid. Right, right. Uh, always owned businesses, invested in things. Um, only early on in my teens, when I was, had a job, you know, I worked every th- kind of job because in the beginning, then I was working jobs, but really out on the street doing things, making money. 
but it was just crazy. And I, again, it was just a crazy time that I grew up in. But what I get to tell everyone is when you do it yourself, you learn so much more. When it's yours, when it's yours, your, your money, your risks, your reward, you learn and you learn fast. Yeah. And in your situation, the situations, I feel the situation that you provide, they get the chance to learn the business, each aspect, hands on. Yes. I, that's why I come to everyone's city. I go to, I do a tour. I'm about to set up another tour coming top of the year. I just finished the eight city tour just now. I'm probably going to do a 20 plus city tour coming from the West Coast back to New York. Okay. Now that, what that means is I'll be in my sprinter driving from state to state to state, city to city to city until I get back home uh, from a West Coast tour. Um, wow. I mean, so I'm going to hit a lot of cities, a lot of people, and you're going to get to talk to me physically. So that's why it's so important to pull up on my events because I'm physically there and I don't leave until it's done. I'm not there just trying to, the money is not the issue. I don't make the money that, this isn't a money grab. I'm not hustling nobody. I'm really I'm really here to empower the people. You know, once again, I have to just take the time to thank you yeah. uh, for your leadership. Because our, 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 our new people, our new youngsters, our, our next generation of youngsters that are going to get into the business need to understand, and the business part, avail themselves of tools and resources that can make them successful business people. Right. You know, because they're not only responsible for themselves, but for those who come along with them. Um, you know how that, uh, Jerry, uh, again, I just said something about myself, right? Yes, sir. I said that my learning, my doing was the best thing. Yeah. So, again, I didn't have a me for me, if that makes sense. I, I didn't have someone teaching me anything. So I had to do it the hardest way. Someone told me, man, you took the hardest path to get to the levels of success you could have to make it. And I was like, man, when I sat back and said, you're right. And I sit, and I sit there and say that to say, if they don't want to come and see me, like these young kids, they have their own mind, they have their own thing. It's okay. Just it more than likely it's going to be a very rough path because no one's giving you the knowledge. Today, there's so much information out here for them. They could get a lot of information and knowledge, whether they go online or whatever. But no one's like, I'm physically, when I physically pull up, people say, you could do it online. It's indirect. It's in person. Mm -hmm. It's still the best thing is in person. Even this even this interview, I would have loved nothing better than we could have did it live somewhere. Me and you talking. Shook your hand. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It's, it's a different effect. I know we're in the digital age. It's all right. I'm still old. Let's say there's still nothing better than that one-to-one -one connection. There's nothing more powerful. I learned that in marketing years and years ago. It still has not changed. But the reality is I can't market one-to-one -to, -one to tens of millions of people where I could do it like that digitally. Right. So it's a combination of what I do. I have to take the physical side of it and the digital side of it emerging. And that's what's going to make Adventure Music the, the only place these artists is going to be able to go. I love it. I've always been a fan of face-to-face -face sit down, man-to-man, shake the hand, et cetera. Et cetera. Right. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm 59, retired military. And, oh, uh, thanks, time, Peter. Oh, uh, no thanks, Dede. Uh Everything I've ever done in my career there has been face-to-face, man-to-man. That's right. You know, but they have, you know, we have to, as the OGs, like you're 59, we're the OGs. So at the end of the day, we have to, and I tell this to all the older people that we deal with, that's the OGs in their space, because they there's a lot of resentment or it seems like, or negative to the youth. And I never give the youth any negative. Why? First and foremost, when you have kids, you learn so much. I got kids, so I watch them. I right. know, I know them. And the, uh, the next part is, it's their time. It's not ours. Agreed. That's the reality. It's their time. It's their world. It, when people say they think it's cliche, the children are our future. No, that's the, that's the truth. Yeah. That is the truth. So it's like, it's about helping them. It's, as an OG, my job is to help them do it faster 
than I did it. Do it better than I did it. That's evolution. Right. Or else we're stagnating. Because believe me, everyone else is doing that. We have to take that same approach. Yeah. You know, again, my 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 uh, what else with adventures again, I, I accept all, but I, this is about black and brown. It's about empowerment. I'm about to go to Africa, Lagos. They're calling me to come out to do my seminars out in Africa for all the Afrobeat artists and things like that. They have an emerging new uh, market now with all these artists. Yes. That have no way of getting a deal. So I'm going out there to start educating them and sh giving them adventure music and showing them they could use this distribution platform. And uh, again, I'm always a front front runner or forward thinker and I watch all these other companies and they always, I know they watch me and they move my movements, but we'll see what happens. I, I still way ahead of them as far as thinking wise is concerned. And I have no problem. I just like, I'm a competitive person. Uh, so I'm sure Nike had no problem with Adidas, right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's something as an old guy, we, we was taught wrong. Because we was taught you had to be the one. Yeah. And we're the only we're the only culture that you have to be the one. Every all these other businesses, there's more than one. And they're all thriving and doing fine. But in our space, we have to be the one. They made you either like Ja Rule or like 50 Cent. That is complete bullshit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I look at it. I shit. I like some of 50's records. I would be a fool to say, I, I would be lying if I said no. Right. Good music is good music. And that's what they made. They would put us, pit us against each other. And we fell for those fucking tricks. But it's been that way I'm, for hundreds of years with us. Um, yeah. It, it's a purpose. It's a, you know, it's part of the chains and images of psychological slavery that uh, we still suffer under. So Man, that psychological slavery is so huge. <laughs> huge. The effect it's, what they did, the cause of man is, I'm telling you, this is part of the adventure music in my passion. This is not, um, this is something I've been doing forever since my, like I said, my construction company was all black. Mm. And they couldn't believe we was out there doing the work. And you know, minority business, they got to give us X percent. That's how we was getting a lot of the work. Right, right, right. I had to go to a, a Jewish person, Kenneth Frolic, to put up the money because I didn't have the money. You had to bond these jobs. These are all city jobs. This wasn't like I'm building a house. I built houses, but this was when I started, it was all city work. Low yeah. bid, you had to bid on jobs, then you go do it. And we did. And it was an all black owned, uh, black and woman owned company. <laughs> and my city, it was me and my sister's company and all black men doing concrete work. They could not believe it. We picked concrete because it's one of the biggest parts of every job. Every job. All those, just think of all the, the high rises in New York. They got to pay a concrete company to come pour that concrete. Yeah. And they had to give away X percentage of it to a minority owned business. So we fit both voids. You yeah. know, a lot of those companies was, uh, again, this is part of our problem is our people was, um, Maybe you like one of us, one of I won't use you, another black man might have started a company and then these white owned companies would just use him as a shell company to get all the money and then pay him. So he eats, but no one else eats. He would make money, but the company that was using to run that business so they looked like they was giving out uh, minority business work to these minority owned companies. That's, that's all it was, was a front. It's a shell. And they still do that to this day. Yeah, I agree. But, but when they've seen my company above all contracting, right? And, and, and they seen all black faces and they these inspectors would come out to the job and ask the who, where's the boss? And they would point to me, but I'm in the hole digging right next to everybody else. So I was in the machine operating the machines. And they was like, no, where's the boss? And they point all the workers say like, he's Chris, and they couldn't believe it. And they would say, where's your supervisor? They would ask me for my supervisor. I said, well, when you hire your supervisor, tell them to come talk to me. <laughs> because, you, all, you know, these are field guys. These are nobody. I'm dealing with their bosses again. And at the end of the day, they would get mad as hell. But then they realized, oh, shit, it's a fucking black guy that owns this shit and runs it. They couldn't yeah, believe yeah. it. And I was young as hell. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. I was in my early 20s. Like, come on, you couldn't. Yeah. Congratulations. I got to remind yeah. you about your schedule. You got a tour. No, right? I got it. I'm on, I'm on with you. Uh, okay. I want to respect it. I, no, I, I got, look, I got my clock up. Man. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I, uh, I just want you to know, brother, that I would love uh, to be your friend in this and help any way that I can editorially. Sure. Uh, to make your service. I already know how you can help. You're a service provider. So I have all, uh, with Adventure Music, I always look for service providers. So you have a digital magazine. How often does your magazine go? Uh, we do digital every month, but I, 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 okay. I no. every day. Right, but you do, you, so again, I would tell these artists all the time, if they want to be on the cover of a magazine, because they all want covers, right? And I said, there's only 12 people picked in a year out of how many? Yeah. Now, if you're talking about adventure, we, you know, you're talking about thousands of artists that want that same slot. Right. So, but interviews, you need content. Oh, I have no lack of content. Yeah. I get so 200 for- pitches a day, but that's been 20 years, we're 20 years in the game. So, right. you know, there was but, a time that nobody would even talk to us. So, yeah, I'm going to give you what I did with uh, Hip Hop Weekly. Okay. They, that, I, I don't know if you remember that magazine, Hip Hop Week. I did with them, yes. It's, it's actually Benzino and Dave Mays. They, right. after they saw us, they took the source. If I told you the true story, they basically jacked my brother for that idea, but it's all good. Because <laughs> yeah. Irv was looking at, he, you know, you go in the office and he had People Magazine, Us Magazine, and all those white magazines, but it was all us, all the celebrities. He said, we need this for Black. And then they made Hip Hop Weekly. It was that, that's exactly the creation. Dave and Ray was in our office and that's how they came up with Hip Hop Weekly. I, so when they did that, what I told them is I need a section. Mm. And I said, I need it for artists. So there should be a, a section in, um, if it's not already, in, in the hype magazine for artists. Meaning, and then I would be love to be the one that says, here's this artist, this artist, this artist, this artist, to get interviewed, to get their story in the magazine under that section. I can make that happen. I'm the guy to I, talk to. I know you can. I, again, and then how I look at it is, it's just these artists are going to actually promote you. So it's a, it, it works both ways. If they that's part of the deal, they have to promote their interview, post the pictures, and that should get you some more traction. Yes. Or people that you don't have, right? It should open you up to more people. That's that's all. Always, always looking to expand. You know. Yeah. We've outlived a lot of people in this past <laughs> 20 years. Uh, yeah. In 2002, we started out as a, a one-page community newsletter. Mm. And uh, 2004, we took the number one digital spot, you know, as the internet was really coming on board. And when 2009, when the internet really went public, yep. that was their ass. And that's when I had written my first business model. See that? 2009. That's the year. <laughs> and, and I'm, we're here so look I want to thank you I, I once again want to express my appreciation for your service and your contribution to the fabric of the music community worldwide the new venture that we're talking about it's not new it was it was it was written about and manifested in 2009 from his mind it went, hey look it went to that that's when I manifested and it was it was a different name who cares and it was rhetorical because I care right and that was after seeing all of this, the the slimy ways these label record label execs move. And then I didn't launch Adventure Music to 15. Ah. See, 09, I was way early. I seen it. I had the foresight to know it was there, but it wasn't ready. It's still typically, it's still fully not ready. As many artists as there are to mm. fulfill the full vision of it is still not ready yet. I'm still in front of the time. And timing is the number one reason all businesses succeed. So I'm agree. waiting. I'll, I'll wait it out and keep pushing and moving forward. And then it's going to hit that pinnacle. And when it's time, it's going to take over everything. Well, I'd love to work it out with you from the editorial standpoint. I'm here. We're yeah. Over. 
and uh, definitely excited to do that. That's kind of how we made our bones. Um, and we'd love to continue working and we'd love to work with you. So, all right, everybody, the Hype Magazine Live Sessions, Chris Gotti, the one and only. Uh, this line right here is at the forefront of things that make sh things shake. And he opens doors, provides tools and resources and opportunities for people to have their own business, create their own generational wealth and understand how to mop the floor as well as sit at the board table in their own business. That awesome. ventures is the, is, is, <laughs> is, is, is the joint, man. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Night Magazine Thank Live Sessions. Chris Gotti, we out. All right now. Thank you, Jerry. Shout out Michael Hudgens <laughs> for putting it together. I appreciate you. All right. All right, Mike. Thank you.